Hi, I'm Jeff Gearling, also known as Gearling Guy, and uh, today I wanted to record a quick video about my upgrade process for Drupal sites. Uh, so in the past few years, the, the process of upgrading Drupal has changed quite a bit. Uh, originally, we used to have Drupal 4, 5, 6, and even 7. Um, usually you would download a tarball or download a zip file. You'd expand it, you'd either upload it to an FTP server, or you'd put it in your Git code base and change a bunch of files out. Uh, and then push that Git repository up to your cloud hosting or up to your server and run it that way. Uh, in the past few years, though, Drupal has become a lot more integrated in the wider PHP ecosystem. So that means um, integrating with Composer for dependency management. There's some trade-offs with that. Some, some things are a lot easier to do, like managing different libraries that your site uses. Some things can be a little bit harder to do, like figuring out the best way to deploy Drupal, because now instead of one way, there's two, three, four, or five different ways. Uh, so I wanted to just show how I do it for most of my sites. There are some sites that I have a much more convoluted and complex way of doing it. It's all automated, but it's a lot more complicated because you know I, I had to automate those parts to make it uh, more robust and able to hold up to a lot more testing and a larger team. Uh, but this is the way that I do it for most of my current sites, all my current Drupal 8 sites that I manage myself. Uh, and I, I have a blog post on this on jeffgearling.com titled How I Upgrade Drupal 8 Sites with Exported Config and Composer. Um, that's actually using another feature of Drupal that's really nice uh, that lets you synchronize your configuration between your local environment, your dev, your stage, your prod, or in my case, for most of my sites, I have a local environment and a production environment. So when I want to make changes, I don't do them on my production environment and hope they work. I do them locally. I test them locally. Uh, if I have tests for the site, I'll run those tests locally. And once all that's done, then I'll push them up to production and it changes everything for me. New content types, new fields, that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, the first thing that I always make sure I do, uh, so I, I have this project called Drupal for Kubernetes. And uh, don't worry about Kubernetes, uh, that we're not going to talk about Kubernetes in this video. Uh, but this Drupal for Kubernetes site is, is an example site that I use for demonstrating how to run Drupal in Kubernetes or in some sort of cloud environment where there's containers and Docker. Um, the whole project is up on GitHub, and you can actually go into my commit history and see what I do, uh, see what happens when I do certain things with the Composer or update configuration. Uh, and that project also has a lot of documentation. So this video is going to focus on upgrading Drupal, but if, if you want to read through the whole process of how to set up your uh, new Drupal site, uh, how to make it reproducible with configuration, how to add a theme, um, creating default content so you can test it locally without having to drag down a database from production and all that stuff. Um, and then it also goes into more stuff. I'm going to be adding more and more to this as time goes on, and I may have time to do some uh, blog posts and videos for all this. But uh, like I said, for this video, we're going to focus on upgrading Drupal. Uh, because I have the site running locally. If you want to do it yourself, you can clone this code base, uh, run this command. You have to have Docker installed. Run this command. Run a couple more commands, and then you'll have it running locally. And I have it here at localhost. Now I have a problem. Uh, a couple days ago, I, uh, I noticed that there was a big Drupal security upgrade. Uh, and I, this site is running 8.6.9. And I need to be running 8.6.10. Uh, so, you know, in, in the old days, you'd come to this page and you'd say, oh, I'm going to download the release, drag all the files over to my code base, commit them and push them up or drag them over to my FTP server. Uh, but we're using Composer, so it's not, it's not quite that simple. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I have this local environment running with the code base that I have running in a Docker container. Uh, and um, I'm going to follow my process that I have over here. So first, I'm going to make sure that I'm all up to date locally. Uh, so I'm going to git pull master, uh, git pull origin master. I need to update my blog post there. Uh, so I'm up to date. I have all the latest code on the master branch, or if you work from a development branch, that branch, whatever branch that you work from. Uh, and then I'm going to reinstall the site. So w with this project, uh, there's a command uh, that's in the readme that you can copy and paste. It will reinstall the site. I just did that before this video. It takes like two or three minutes, so I'm not going to make you sit through that. Uh, but this will reinstall everything locally. Uh, it'll reset all the content, reset all the configuration, and all that kind of stuff. So you want to have a fresh, clean slate when you're doing any new work. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a branch. Um, 
So I'm going to say git checkout dash b, and I actually have an issue uh, for this upgrade in my issue tracker. And I always like to relate uh, branches to my issues so I can relate the code uh, to the, the actual work that I'm doing uh, on, on some sort of tracker. So I have a, an issue here for upgrading Drupal core. It's issue number 12. So I'm going to say uh, 12 Drupal upgrade. Uh, and then now that I'm on my new branch, I can start doing my work. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is, um, if I had tests, this particular site doesn't yet have any tests, but I could run the PHP unit test or the BHAT test just to make sure that they're working like they normally should. Uh, you don't you don't want to go in and do tons of work and find out your test is broken, then find out your test was actually already broken before, and you spend all this time trying to figure out why. Uh, but if you have them run the tests at that point, otherwise I'm going to run composer update. Uh, now there's there's a lot of different strategies for how you manage composer updates. Uh, you can run a command to just upgrade Drupal core and all the things that are required with it, like there's a Webflow package for Drupal core and there's there might be some Symfony packages you have to update. That can get a little bit complicated. And uh, for the bigger sites that I manage, I actually do it that way. Uh, but for this site, it's a little simpler. And what I do uh, to make sure that my updates don't surprise me is any module that's extremely important to me when I require them. Uh, so for instance, I use the admin toolbar module. I actually require the exact version of that module. So I'm requiring 1.26.0. And what happens is, I'll go back to the site locally and go back to available updates. Uh, if there's an update, it's not going to update it. If I just run composer update, it'll keep it locked in at this version because my requirement says keep it at this particular version. So I can manually update that particular module outside of the composer update workflow by saying composer require Drupal admin toolbar 1.27.0 or whatever the next version will be. Um, so that's the way that I do it. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways to manage how you do versions of modules, but this way is very simple and allows you to just run composer update whenever you need to. Uh, so anything that's super important to have validated and tested, you should lock in the version. That's, that's the way that I do it, because uh, that way is a little more compatible with the Drupal way of doing things. In, in general, PHP land, things are a little better about following semantic versioning. But if you notice here, this is not actually the semantic version of the admin toolbar module. If I go to that modules page, the actual version of the module uh, is 8.x-1.26, which in semantic versioning land like Composer likes, that doesn't mean much. So Drupal modules, I typically lock in at the exact version that I, I want them to be locked in at. Uh, so now that I have that, I, I have that locked in, I know it's not going to update itself when I run composer update, uh, and I don't want it to until I'm ready to update it. Uh, so I'm going to run composer update in the code base here, and it's going to uh, look at all the, all the different requirements that I have in my composer file and start seeing like, hey, does anything need an update? Uh, it'll look through every package in here, all the packages that they rely on, uh, and you can see it's, it sees that there's uh, a Composer uh, Drupal Optimizations package that needs an update. Uh, there's Drupal Core is updating to 8.6.10. Um, and another note, too, is sometimes you might run Composer Update or Composer Update Drupal Core, and it won't actually update, and you're like, what is going on? Uh, I have some blog posts for that, too, on my website. If you go to jeffgearling.com and search for Composer Update Drupal, I think there's a few on here. Uh, yeah, so updating Drupal core with Composer, but Drupal core doesn't update. Uh, there's a lot of debugging and troubleshooting, and, and there's a lot of great comments in there, too, that kind of go over uh, what's difficult about it and different ways that you can make sure it works correctly. Uh, one of the advantages to doing it the way that I'm doing it, where I, I just run Composer update by itself, is it usually works a little better. Uh, and I still have that control over my modules to say, I want to keep this module at this version. I don't want it to update on its own without my intervention. Uh, so you can see it's also updating some other modules like Devel, which I only have locally. Uh, you can see that that's a, a dev dependency right here, require dev. So this is only ever going to get installed on my local machine. I won't ever install it in production. So I, I'm okay with that one being as up-to-date as possible. Uh, so it looks like that just finished. Uh, so the next step I'm going to do is make sure uh, you can't just commit this. So if I say, I'm going to say git status, and you'll see that the composer.lock file has changed. And if I say git 
diff, I can see what's changed. So there's there's a consolidation slash config that updated. Um, there's Robo that updated a little bit. Drupal core updated. So I can see all the code updates, and that's that's okay. Uh, but sometimes with a Drupal core upgrade, there could be a, a database schema change, a configuration schema change. So you need to make sure that you update your configuration export too. Uh, and part of that process is making sure you update your uh, database updates. So uh, locally, if I go to localhost, which is my local site of this, uh, this is now running the latest code that, that uh, was dropped in after Composer Update ran. And it looks like my computer is getting completely overloaded by syncing files with Dropbox. Um, so Composer Update ran, and this is running the latest version of everything. I can confirm that by checking on available updates. And it should say that I'm on Drupal Core 8.6.10. Uh, if the page ever loads. The computer, I think, is a little confused by how many files were just changed. Yeah, so I'm running the latest version. So I'm going to run database updates. Sometimes there are updates, sometimes there aren't. I always run it uh, just in case, you know, if, if you don't run it and you needed to, that's when you can start having problems when you deploy your code to production. Uh, so I'm going to go here, and it looks like there is an update. So that's a good, good, a good thing that I went here and did that update. Uh, so I'm waiting for that to finish. And once that's done, I'm going to head back over to the home page. Probably doesn't help that I'm also recording my screen at 4K resolution, which should be at 1080p. Uh, I'll probably be downscaling it for the video anyways, uh, just to save hours and hours of processing time. Uh, so here's the home page, and uh, the next step is, so it ran database updates, uh, and at this point, if, if you have tests, run them. Again, make sure that none of the tests have broken. If they have, then you know that the, the updates that just ran, something in them broke something, and then you can start investigating what that is, figure it out, fix it, and then you have a working code base again. Um, in terms of this site, I, I have it uh, I have it all running locally, and, and it has some sample content. In fact, for this code base, I have all of my content in the code base. But you might be wondering, why do you have all your content in the code base? It should be in the database. Well, I'll cover that in another blog post at some point. Uh, but I can see that everything seems to be working okay when I'm clicking around on the site. Uh, if I go to the wiki, the menu should be over here. Uh, and if I edit a page, editing should still work okay. I shouldn't be getting any errors, messages, or anything like that, and it looks like everything's working fine. Uh, so I think every all my tests have passed, uh, and the next step is you need to export configuration, because even if you didn't have any database updates, sometimes there could be uh, a configuration schema change that you don't notice uh, unless you export your configuration. Uh, so for this site, I'm not using config split. A lot of them I do. Uh, but you want to run this command drush cex or drush config export, I think it is, uh, dash y to export it. And uh, for this project, I run it inside of a Docker container. So I'm going to run this command. And it's going to use drush to export all of Drupal's configuration into the config sync directory. And... Let's see, now that's done, and I can check. I can say git status, and it looks like there was no change configuration. So for this update, I'm safe either way, but it's always safer to do it and not have any changes than not to do it and hope that there weren't any changes. Um, another thing that I, I will usually do, especially if it's there's a lot of updates, is I will reinstall the entire local site, run all my tests again, and ensure that that's working correctly. And once that's done, uh, in this case, I'm not going to do it because I know it was just Drupal core and a couple other small things. Uh, and I've, I've run the test locally, and uh, I've done this update on many other sites and not had any issues. Uh, and also, I have a CI job that does the exact same thing. It reinstalls Drupal and tests that everything's working before it will allow me to push it anywhere. Uh, so once everything's done, I can commit this code. So the only code that's changed is the composer.lock file, which is good. Um, so I'm going to say git add composer.lock. Uh, make sure that I'm good. Git status. Okay, that's the only change that's going to go there. 
the git commit message fixes number 12, upgrade Drupal core to 8.6.10. Okay, git push, and then I'm going to push up this branch 12 Drupal upgrade. Uh, I think it's origin. So that's going to push it on up to GitHub where this project is located. And if I go over here, I can see uh, that there's a new branch here. And if I go to issues and upgrade Drupal core, I have a reference from that commit and I can see the progress of that build. Uh, so in, in, my, in my, the way that I do this is I'll push up the branch. If the branch passes the Travis CI build or whatever CI tool you use, then I can merge it into master and deploy it to production. Uh, so at this point I have a successful Drupal upgrade. Of course, obviously once Travis CI passes all my tests that I have built into it, uh, and then I can run my deployment process. In this case, it's pushing a container to a Docker registry and updating a Kubernetes uh, manifest, but in your case, it could be pushing some code to production. It could be whatever you do when you, when you have some code updates that you have to push out to production. Um, so th this particular video doesn't cover every aspect of how you would um, you know, do the deployment process or every aspect of how you would manage your updates in Composer. Uh, that's intentional because otherwise I could do a one or two or three hour video on those kind of things, probably longer, probably a whole series of videos. Um, and I might, I might add some more content uh, along those lines in the future. But for now, uh, this is my process for how I update Drupal core for all of my Drupal 8 sites. I'm trying to get more of my Drupal 7 sites to this process too because once you have things automated, it's actually a lot faster and it's a lot safer uh, than just kind of dragging files over or doing things like that. I uh, hope you liked this video. Check out my blog, jeffgearling.com. And uh, if you like it a lot and you want to see a little bit more of this content, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks.